Chef. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. You're in Canada now? I am. Okay. Thank you for uh, taking this time to, 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 to help us educate uh, people in Indonesia, especially about your work. Uh, for, uh, I've, I've I followed you for a few years, uh, two years, I think. Uh, I'm familiar with your, your book. Uh, two years is a long time in Bitcoin time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A short introduction to you. Jeff Booth here is an entrepreneur who has lived at the forefront of changes in technology for around 20 years. He has made tech businesses and been featured in Forbes, TechCrunch, Bloomberg, Time, and a lot more in the name of you. Uh, yeah, I came to know Jeff through his work, The Price of Tomorrow, a book that made me follow more of his talks regarding our inflationary economy system and the na na natural deflationary pressure of technology that is exponentially increasing. Do you have something to add to that, Jeff? No, I think that does a pretty good job. We're um, the high level. We're dealing with two different systems colliding against each other. One one technology, which is the free market, trying to bring prices down, trying to save our time, and it's colliding into another system, which is man made, which requires inflation to stay solvent. Okay, well, let's start then. Sure. Funny, See, so, uh, yeah, I'm very curious about uh, more of uh, your book called uh, The Price of Tomorrow. Uh, uh, earlier, you said that it is uh, something about uh, two, sy two system colliding between uh, one inflationary system, which is man-made, and the other is uh, the defl deflationary pressure, so to say. Uh, is there something more about it in, in that book? Uh, lots more about that in the book. It just because what it what I what I wrote what I what I was most people don't realize that the rise of debt and then the rise of debt that can't be repaid is actually uh, because of the uh, of technology trying to free, uh, free our time, and so technology is trying to bring prices down, um, but but the system is, the system built on credit has to increase prices. Um, because if it mm -hmm. allows, if it allows a debt spiral, then that system collapses, and that system underlies everything. So that system is the the money in your bank is credit in your bank, and so mm -hmm. so if the system collapses, everything collapses. It's built on top of it, which is your way of life. So, so what I talked about in the book is what would happen if you kept on trying to inflate against technology moving the other way, what would happen to society and what would happen to society predictably would be, um, would be society would divide it against each other and, and fight um, as a result of two systems colliding against each other. So there's a lot more in the book about, that explains what would happen. And, and pretty much since I wrote it, everything it predicts the world we're in today. I see. I know that. I know that's the interesting part. That's why yeah, I want to yeah, uh, break it down a little. Uh, well, for the general people, uh, most of us, we're always been told that inflation, one of the topics that you talk about, a lot about in your book, at least a little bit of inflation is good for the economy. I'm not an economist, so I'll take it out in the face value, but although it may be good for the economy, I can see clearly that it hasn't been too good for most of the people inside the econ uh, economy. So yeah, can you explain to us why an inflationary monetary system is actually bad for society, which would we can see potential effects from it uh, explained in your book? Yes, it's really actually coming to fruition nowadays. Yeah, so and I think that's what, what I want to make sure that people understand uh, here. Um, um, you ask yourself, when, when you say, I'll take it at face value and inflation is good for an economy, ask yourself why. Right? 
So, so all that inflation is, is inflation is wage deflation, right? So somebody, somebody gets, uh, gets more, somebody gets less. So if you're a worker, if you're middle class and poor, and you don't own assets, you get less. And somebody that owns assets or businesses gets more. And so it's like walking into somebody's house, and then we hear um, 2% inflation is good, right? That's what the, the right, right rate of inflation is. And the reason for that is, is when if somebody walked into your house while you weren't there and stole 2% of your stuff, you probably wouldn't notice. If they did it the next year, you probably wouldn't notice. So you don't notice it. You don't know notice that theft over time. But then what ends up happening is it has to be a bigger and bigger amount all the time. And so I want to first just challenge people who think inflation is required for productive society. Just ask why. Why is that true? And it's not true. It is true. Inflation is required, though, for a credit-based system. And so we built a credit-based system, and we built a credit-based system, and I don't mean me, but the world, us, chose a credit-based system because we built a system typically on top of gold and then, and then built, and gold couldn't have velocity in money. You couldn't move it around fast enough. So people built a credit-based system on top of gold so you could move money around fast enough. But as soon as a credit-based system is established, then it's subject to the whim and nature of human beings who manipulate it over time, and it has to grow. And if it doesn't keep growing, what you have is a credit collapse. Um, and when the credit collapses, then in the old times, then everybody would run and get their gold from the bank. And if the bank didn't have enough gold, it would fail. So what, what ends up happening is over time, you get bigger and bigger leverage, and then you remove the gold from the from the bank, banks, and you remove the gold from the system completely. And then if and then if everybody comes running for the money at the same time, you just print more money, you make up more money, and it causes inflation to go higher and higher and higher. And so that's where we are today, um, in in the world. But it but. To say that inflation is required for a productive economy is, is just, uh, just completely false. It's productive for a debt-based economy. I mean, it's required for a debt-based economy. And so, so and, and, and then ask yourself this question. Say, say, all of the things we do to try to solve problems with, and, and, uh, with, with technology or just the free market, if we solve those problems and prices have to fall as a result and those businesses become successful and we use those services, the reason, reason we can do this right now, and we can talk to millions of people all over the world, we can touch millions of people all over the world, and it's literally completely free. Think of what that would have cost 10 or 20 years ago. We would all have to get on planes. We'd all have to go to hotels. We'd all have to sit in a conference room. Um, and all of that cost is now gone, and we had, we have an advantage of it. The same thing with your calculator app on your phone; it's completely free because technology takes uh, the cost falls to its marginal cost of production, and the marginal cost of production of a line of code is free. And so, so we were we celebrate in in one part of our lives all of that ability for it to get things less costly all the time. And we, we vote with our time to get more value. But in the other side of our life, the, the seller side, we think our wages should go up forever and our house prices should go up forever. Hmm. But we're both seller and buyer at the same time. So it can't, so, so we vote for a system that we, t we listen to politicians tell us they can give us more money. And what they're really doing is picking our pocket instead. Yeah, well, that's bad. Yeah, it seems like it's true. We get raises like every year, but there's less stuff and services we can buy with it. 
Right? Exactly. So, so what what ends up happening? And, and so if you look at your phone, if you ever how much how much you use your phone now, you think, wow, the, it, all of these things. Think about cameras too. Too, you you take way more photos today. They're abundant, right? You take and they're free. Editing software is free. Everything's free on uh, on. Um, and that replaced an entire industry that used to have a whole bunch of costs and a whole bunch of jobs. And now that industry is completely gone. Kodak's gone. All of the, you don't go and buy film any, any, anymore, you, but you take more photos. So you get the abundance and prices fall as a result. But if you print money into that, then the things we need most keep going up in price, like housing, like rents, like, uh, like energy like food, the thing, the scarce things in life, keep going up in price. Um, and, and, to, and what it really does is concentrates the, the pr productivity gains that should be flowing to society, through the form of lower prices, it concentrates those productivity gains, in very few people at the top. That's the result of inflationary monetary system, it has to concentrate the productivity gains that are naturally driven from 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 technology and the free market into very few hands. So that's what you see all around the world today. Um, rich getting richer and richer and richer, and the middle class and poor are getting poorer and poorer and poorer. And and people don't know what's going on. They they're they're wondering. They they can't. They're really confused because they can't get enough pay, pay to make their ends meet. They're working harder and harder and harder, two jobs, three jobs, harder and harder and harder, and they're on a mouse wheel that's moving faster and faster away from them. Because, because when you have inflation, it is wage deflation. You're getting paid less. It wouldn't work if it didn't, if it didn't look like that. So while, while, people think they're, while people think they're getting paid more, their real wages are going down. Yeah. Prices of things are going up faster than their wages. True, it's like it's, it's exactly the same thing actually, but people don't see it that, that way. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and sometimes uh, people uh, misdirect their anger to, well, something else, but completely blind, blindsided with the uh, monetary problem that exists nowadays. Yeah, and and I think that's really an important uh, uh, note you said there, and and I've, I've said that this is on many podcasts. You may have heard me say this before, but we measure a system from a system. So all of our job, what we're doing, and, and we're, we're yelling at that system that's getting worse and worse. They, we can't see a parallel system that's outside the system our houses are valued in that system our food is in that system our banks are in that system everyone is in that system and we measure the system from the system that is being manipulated so so it's really hard to see for for average people that are that haven't done a deep dive on what's happening because because they're just they, they don't know how fast their money is being manipulated it's very difficult, you know. That's a, that's a paradigm shift. It's trying to, to to step out from the current mindset of the the economy system that's existing today, and trying to look at it from the other side. It's like replacement. One other thing I need to ask you for people to understand: we've talked about inflation, why it's bad. It's actually bad, but deflation is a scary monster for economy. So they say, but you see this as a good thing. I remember uh, my 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 younger days when I had to pay to take pictures and to buy films. I, I can I can take 12, 24, or thirty six pictures, uh, but now I can do like hundreds with no cost at all. So, can you explain to us why is the deflationary effects from the expense, exponential progress of technology is actually good for us. I can I can understand that, but can you, can you explain it a little bit more for the general audience? And how so, so, does that affect businesses? Because yeah, so people are paying less for our product. That that would make sense. Yeah, but but again, um, you, what you just did with your what you just talked about with your photos. 
that's what happens. And, and so all businesses are trying to create more value because if they create less value for people, people stop people using their business. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. the entire thing about creating a business is a competition with all other businesses to try to create more value for society. So you can see by that very nature, it has to reduce prices. And so now we add technology to that. And what technology to that now with artificial intelligence and, and, and a whole bunch of technology, you can deliver a ton without the same amount of labor that you used to need. That's why your photos are free. That's why. Um, um, and, and so what should happen is prices should fall everywhere as you have more and more um, deflation. As, as people say, okay, well, that, that applies to some things, but it doesn't apply to energy. Okay. And ask yourself, has there been a technology in energy? Have we found more energy? Do we do fracking today that found that finds more energy? We do solar today. We, we're constantly innovating in energy too. The only reason energy prices are higher is because we're manipulating money to make them higher. The, and, and, and this has giant connections everywhere because there's a whole bunch of people that believe um, uh, uh, climate change and, and and everything that we have have there and and co2 gases are going a lot higher but here's what i would ask you because i, I i'm on a whole bunch of boards and i'm on a whole bunch of uh I made a bunch of investments in technology companies solving climate change but every single time they win and they provide more value and reduce prices the monetary system has to steal that gain and make prices go up elsewhere. So, so the monetary system itself is climate change because oh. it has to grow against the natural order of things trying to drive prices down. And so this is connected to everything, but people don't see it they're, because they're measuring from in a system. It's like the, it, it's, a fish doesn't know what a mountain is. They know what the water is, right? They know, um, yeah. and, and and that's what and, and 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 that's what that's what's happening today with people inside the system. They can't see it. They've been so brainwashed inside the system that they can't see that the system is actually the thing that's responsible for all of the pain they're going through. Um, and Hanson, just let me because I, I didn't quite answer your question, and and and, but I'll do it this. I'll do it this way. Um, abundance and money create scarcity everywhere. So if you if you grant people ability to create more money, just manipulate money by, um, then it creates scarcity, and scarcity and money creates abundance everywhere. Um, and it's um, it's hard to see from our existing system that's abundant in money and you creating scarcity everywhere in the world. But the, the opposite is true too. We have enough technology already today, even if we didn't solve um, and it didn't move forward. We have enough uh, technology to get, bring abundance to the world right now with technology. Um, but we're not because we're allowing it to be captured um, in, into a broken broken system. And, and here's an, another way to look at it. The oxygen you breathe right now is the most valuable thing in your life. Why is it free? It's, it's free because it's abundant. And we don't, we, it would be ludicrous to think there's a whole bunch of entrepreneurs running into your, uh, your office right now and, and saying, Oh, I'm going to, will you pay me for oxygen? Right? You'd laugh at, there's no way money to be made there. <laughs> right? That's why it's, that's why it's free. Now, it's not free if you want to go underwater. It's not free if you want to go to space where it's where, where oxygen scarce, but it's free because it's abundant. And that abundance is what technology does in everything. That abundance is why your calculator is free. That abundance is why your uh, photos are free. That abundance should apply to just about everything, but it's not because we have a, uh, we have a monetary system capturing that and transferring that abundance to very few. Yeah, that's a completely new per perspective to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now we have uh, an existing monetary system, uh, which the 
uh, money grows uh, uh, every day and we can see the change of it there's a like there's a web page that track the the amount of uh, uh, monetary unit let's say the dollar for every quarter and there is an, another alternative monitor system which is uh, the bitcoin which well uh, it's it's completely limited uh, and nobody can uh, expand it uh, over 21 million unit so how does uh, bitcoin fit into your thesis so and and and, and that's what so so the world needs both a neutral reserve currency and a hard money um mm -hmm. and um and there's a bitcoin is for for people that uh, you've probably done a bunch of work on this but maybe many people on the on, uh, that are listening haven't and it takes a long time to understand the depth of what bitcoin is so it takes um, uh, um but i'll try to do it in layers um to, so so those two systems one unlimited money one scarce money um, one unlimited money would provide scarcity everywhere. That's the system that most people live in today. Well, we're transitioning to a new system with scarce money that will provide abundance everywhere. Um, and those two systems are operating independently. And most people are measuring Bitcoin through the other system. So when they measure price, what they're actually doing is, is measuring Bitcoin through the error code of the other system. Because Bitcoin's outside of that system. In fact, what's actually happening is over time, and you have everything divided by 21 million, that's actually something that Knut, uh, a friend of mine, uh, first said, um, is, is the bit, everything is going to fall against Bitcoin forever. Um, so it's not Bitcoin's going up forever. It's everything is going to fall in price against Bitcoin forever. So it's purchasing power will go higher because it's it's fixed. And that transition between one system to another system is is going to just be a gradual transition. It might happen faster, might happen slower. It's going to be rock, rocky along the way. But over time, that's exactly what's happening. And more so, um, uh, even more than that, that's if, if you understand Bitcoin kind of at these the pristine collateral asset value, what's happening on top of Bitcoin on Lightning, Fediment, Tarot, um, a bunch of other, Bitcoin's going to be the new peer-to-peer -peer internet. So the innovation that's happening on top of this protocol stack is, create, is going to create the new internet of the future that is based on hard money and money is native to, to, to the in, internet. It's a really powerful idea. And, and many people in Bitcoin, so you, um, I use this example and it might not land for people in Indonesia. By the way, I love Indonesia. I've been there multiple times, <laughs> but, oh. um, um, the, but, but the retail stores in the US and in Canada. Um, so the, uh, Sears was one of the biggest. So if you were an if you were an executive in Sears, it's from 1995 to 2010, you would have seen a world that was collapsing, right? Everything was getting worse and worse and worse for 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 Sears. If you were an executive at Amazon in the same time, you would have seen a world that was expanding, and everything was getting better and better and better. Now, those are two different systems, two different frame of my frame of reference in the same world from a transition from one system to another. And, and that's what's happening with Bitcoin and the existing system. So if you're in the existing system and you're measuring everything from the existing system, you're starting to see a lot of pain, less hope, fear, everything in, in the existing system and it's getting worse and worse and you can't put your finger on what's happening. But if you step out and start living in what's happening in Bitcoin, you see, you see truth, you see hope, you see abundance, and you see it everywhere. And the more you're in that system, the more people you're connected to into this massive, very quickly growing, exponentially growing network effect that's bringing us together onto that, where we can trade with anyone in the world outside of the existing system. So it's very, very powerful. It's interesting that that 
you 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 mentioned just a little bit about Bitcoin in your book. So when I read your book, it's like okay, this is eye opening and scary at the same time. <laughs> but then you 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 get hope, and it's in Bitcoin. I I I watch your your. You talk about the importance of that for us to fix the money with Greg Foss and Lawrence Le Leppard recently yeah. at the Bitcoin Collective Conference. So I think maybe this is this. Is, uh, how is the current to to explain it more deeply? How is the current fiat inflationary system corrupting our world, and how does Bitcoin helps to fix this? I understand it, but can you explain expand it more for people who doesn't really understand Bitcoin yet? So, so again, let's let's just go from the existing system and just first principles on the existing system. The existing system, there's two 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 ways that it's going to collapse. It's going to collapse either from an a, an inflation hyperinflation on one path, or or deflate if if government stopped printing you would have a co complete collapse of society as money failed so you can imagine if if they stopped printing for any length of time and society collapsed what do you think would happen they'll print more because society yeah. will demand them to so yeah. you have a system you have an unstable system that's more and more unstable with no way out there's door one door two there is no door three from that system. It is it, what door three is from that system. Normally, when you reset a system like this, and history shows we've done it many times in the past uh, in humanity, typically we, you go through a world war and then you reset this uh, system. That is typically, and, and, and why that's pretty a predictable event is once you get to that stage, it's easier to turn your population against another population in the world than admit the problem. We can see that coming. We can see it everywhere. Yeah, we can see, see it, it everywhere. Just open your yeah. eyes. You can see it everywhere. Um, and so, so that whole system relies on this. Um, all money is, is information. We actually don't want more in money. We want more of what we believe money will buy us for some of us that's um, a nice vacation with our family every year some of us it's safety some of it's freedom some of it's so so i look better to somebody else it's e it's ego but we actually don't want more money we want more of the feeling of what we believe the money will buy us so so money is just information um and I can prove that pretty easily because if money wasn't information, a Venezuelan boulevard would be equal to a US dollar. Right? They would have so you can see money is just an information carrying the thing thing you want. So now if you say that in the existing system, it's okay for, for somebody in the government or a central bank or anyone else, somebody other than you, to say, I'm going to create more more money out of nothing, then they've created more misinformation. Yeah. And that misinformation is spreading and trillions of dollars of misinformation is spreading. And people are looking through that misinformation in society and thinking they have perfect information. And they don't because because it's all misinformation through, uh, through society. So, and then Bitcoin is the exact opposite system. It's it it's an open monetary network based on truth. You can anybody can when 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 this uh, this the saying in Bitcoin um, to do your own research, right? Ver uh, verif don't trust verify um, is it's open source. You can audit everything. You can download your own node and you can see what I'm saying right now is the truth in Bitcoin and nobody can change the rules. It is, it is open might for all of us without, without anybody being a, that doesn't take it and put money and power in somebody's hands. And so that's a big deal. That's, uh, uh, that, that's a big deal when you have truth in money forever. It changes, it changes the, it, cha it changes the future.
and it's permissionless it's anti confiscation which you i think you can talk about a lot uh, uh, because of the current uh, the recent uh bank account freezing yeah uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so it, but 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 again the existing system if it's based on misinformation it's not based on a free market it's not based on on what should be happening in a market if it's so if it's based on misinformation and and the only reason it's allowed to be uh stable then over time it has to be based on coercion as well because people people start fighting back and so the government has to has to be able to freeze bank accounts they have to be able to in the existing system they have to it, it, what ends up happening is you you're concentrating power and people start rising up so you uh, you have to lock them out of a system and so that's coming everywhere unfortunately out of the existing system because it it, it demands it um it's just a um and when i wrote my book um and uh, you you read it i so there was a hundred in the last 20 years, there's $185 trillion of additional debt to produce $46 trillion of additional growth in the global economy. So $4 of new debt for every $1 of growth. Now remember the $1 of growth isn't the taxes that the government would get on that growth. It's the overall growth. So 185 trillion for 46 trillion of growth over 20 years. And why? Because technology is trying to make prices go down and have to make prices go up faster and faster and faster. So the debt, and, and, and I think you probably remember, I predicted that the, the rate of growth of debt had to be exponential. Right? It had to keep going because <laughs> what's happening is the only way you could survive as a company is you have to automate faster. You have to reduce labor faster. You have to remove labor faster to survive as a company. So you have one path going faster and faster this way and another path that's exponential on the other side. Now, if anybody can tell me why that should be, that that's the world we should live in. I, I haven't heard a plausible answer. <laughs> um, it, it, just, it, it just people think, oh, that's the world we have always have lived in. So they, 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 they have a hard time seeing what could look what something could look like. And that's why Bitcoin's so exciting. It's an emergent system that's, that's completely outside of that system that's unstoppable, moving faster and faster. I actually asked a few friends of mine, uh, uh, someone who's more knowledgeable about the economy than me. I asked that, that exact question. Uh, what do you think the world will look like in a few decades where we're inflating our money, but the technology we're using is uh, reducing prices faster and faster? And they can't even, they can't give me a clear answer. What it, what it looks like is, a, yeah, because, because if you allowed that to happen, it's it would look like a dystopian, it would look like a dystopian novel. Because you, what that means is the person on top, whoever fa whatever face you believe should lead you, they're leading you with artificial intelligence and everybody else are just slaves to that with no, with no individual rights and freedoms. Because if you keep doing that, you're just concentrating that wealth further and further and further into narrow. <laughs> so, so instead of the 1%, and then the 0.1%, and, and it just keeps on moving up until there's one person at the top of the whole stack and everybody else is it's modern day slavery. Right. That's Those, what it would look like um, yeah, because yeah. it has yeah. to, it's just math. And a lot of people will, will, will fight uh, against it. But I think with the rise of CBDCs all over the country nowadays, uh, that's how they'll, they'll do it. Uh, yeah, but but if you just go go to that, I, no, I I don't buy. I CBDCs will be tried; they won't they won't work. But every time people take to the streets to rise up against what we're talking about, 
or elect somebody different on the opposite side of the aisle of the political spectrum that they think will fix it, they make the existing system stronger. This is they, the same, yeah. Because it's impossible so, wow. to... Yeah. It, it, so, so, so the only way to stop what's what what would be a terrible consequence for all humanity is to take a nonviolent protest by Bitcoin and start framing your world in Bitcoin, and you you walk to the other side into a different frame of of reference. You built you and you're building a bridge as you're walking to the other side. And more, so more people can walk across that bridge, and and that world transitions into a different transition. And you know, I used the Amazon Sears um, idea before. Yep. I, I often ask the, uh, this: If Sears failed in '99 when Amazon was just selling books, and all of the other retail stores uh, failed in 1999 with when Amazon was selling books and people had no way to go and buy their food, that would have been a bad day. Um, mm. but, but in 2010, nobody cared that Sears failed because it was a transition. It was a network transition. That's what's happening on Bitcoin. And yes, the people that are going early on Bitcoin are going to have more of wealth, more wealth, not more control more wealth in the in the new system they will see a brighter future but the th but the thing about that bitcoin system is it's a bright future for everybody as as, as it was and it's that tra it's that network transition and it's hard to see right now because the world that you're measuring from or most people are measuring is, is from is four orders of magnitude not four times four orders of magnitude bigger than bitcoin but bitcoin is growing very fast and it's getting stronger and stronger as it as, as it grows. Um, so that network transition is just going to play out, um, and and the sooner people walk across the bridge on a non nonviolent trans nonviolent protest by buying it, the sooner they start to see a brighter world. That on zero, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I completely agree with that uh, because. Well, uh, it's hard to measure the the actual value of Bitcoin right now because, as as you said, uh, it's all misinformation right out there, and yeah, it's like measuring something with a with a rubber rubber ruler. So, and just measure adopt. So, if people want to um, measure Bitcoin, measure adoption rate of, of of Bitcoin and measure the adoption rate of Lightning Network measure people adopting instead of mm -hmm. price and you won't be confused by by what uh, the, the, um, everything that's going on in the broader uh, world and 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 buy every day um, buy every week buy something small each week, uh, uh, week but just start doing it and and uh, you've probably already covered this on other talks but learn self custody learn how to do self custody. Don't get it off exchanges. Hold it yourself. Understand how to do that, um, because this is this is a this is a revolution to money that gives you control. Nobody can take from you. Yeah. Yeah, we actually had had that talk uh, uh, had a session yesterday about the uh, uh, self custody and yeah. Yeah. So. And do you have something other, uh, Hansen? Yeah, about self custody. Uh, you're, you're, you're not you, you yourself, but Canada's experience <laughs> of uh, with Trudeau uh, recently uh, is a good, good, good. It's a great advertisement for Bitcoin, actually. <laughs> oh, so you know I was involved in that by with uh, with the truckers pr uh, protest, and and it wasn't actually even the truckers specifically that their thing, but but freedom of speech is required in a democratic country, and uh, and no matter and and if you say these people can't a nonviolent uh, uh, protest is 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 protected um, uh, by our constitution. 
uh, by a bill of rights. And so, um, mm. the, the, and then to make that, to, to say uh, those people aren't allowed free speech, and then to cut them off from a banking system, the banking system to, to do that, it's outrageous. It's outrageous. But, but you're, you're totally right. That spread around the world because people said, started to see if that could happen in Canada, it, could ha it can happen everywhere. And you have these Western nations that will turn their, their, uh, uh, their nose up at, at other nations that would do it. That are doing it themselves now, and and so this all comes from this all comes from broken money that that it has to increase coercion. You lose, um, and and these these are hard to grasp concepts, but um, communism and capitalism are the exact same system under printed money. Hmm. It's exactly the same system. So, so we believe, and, and here's, a, here's why, if 70% of government income comes from inflation instead of taxes, and I don't have a vote in inflation, do I have a vote that matters at all? It's just, it's just theater. Probably not. It's just theater. <laughs> yeah, so true. Do you have any more questions, Bunny? I've been talking too much, I think. <laughs> I have a lot to ask uh, to you, Mr. Booth, but yeah, uh, we have a limited time. But yeah, we uh, still have 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, moving from the inflationary economy to, to a deflationary system will need some change in, in people's mindset. Like they usually have this uh wage uh, uh increase every year but when you move to, to a new system then they will their, their wage probably decrease uh but at least they have uh, yeah so let's dig into that because i think that's actually a really important uh piece yeah um so the reason why why inflation works is people don't notice you'll hear economists say wages are sticky Right. Hmm. And what that means is wages don't move up as fast as inflation because wages are sticky. So in other words, people don't notice that they're getting robbed um, and they're getting poorer because wages are sticky. So if that's a well-known construct in, by economists, then if you reversed it and wages are sticky, then wages wouldn't go down as fast as prices went down. Right? And it would be the opposite okay. transfer. It would be the exact, it would look exactly the opposite. Instead of transferring all the wealth to, 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 to the top, you're transferring, you're transferring that wealth to the middle class and poor. That's, that, that's, that's what would happen. So all of these constructs, because we live in a different system and this new system works almost entirely 180 from that. You have to think in terms of the new system and what that would, what that would, that would do. And, and I, and, and so, yeah, maybe people are only working 10 hours a week and they have a better standard of living than they have today. Yeah. Um, that might not be such a bad thing. I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and maybe unemployment is not a bad thing if, if they chose to, if they chose to not for oak. It, it, that's that's exactly it maybe maybe i don't need i don't need employment for the air i breathe i don't need employment for the water i have and if more if more things fell to the natural price of things i might not need employment at all there's a really fresh per perspective for us so uh yeah in your in your in your in your view the global macro environment we're going through the uh, it's a rough time and i do not know whether it's going to be uh resolved soon but some people uh, especially people who's paying attention just to the price of bitcoin uh well, 
I don't know, we'll have a we'll have second thoughts. I think. But for your, from your perspective, does that affect your thesis on Bitcoin? So, so nothing has changed. In my, it, 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 you read my book. I don't. How long ago did you read my book? Two years ago. Uh, around two years ago. Yeah. So, so that book I wrote in 2018, 2019, and and released it in January of 2020. Everything in that book is coming true at a faster, uh, and faster and faster rate. So, so my thesis is just more and more confirmed all the time. And my thesis is also confirmed on Bitcoin because the adoption rate is going is, is staggering and the adoption rate and the innovation on top of Bitcoin um, with uh, with lightning and everything that's coming is staggering. And so what would I do? I would do exactly what I'm doing now. I just started a venture capital fund so that I could invest in more of the companies on top of Bitcoin. Yeah, the name is um, interesting. Yeah, and it called it called Ego Death Capital. And if we've we've already seen 320 companies done diligence on 320 co uh, companies in this space, um, and we have we've announced two of the investments, and we have a third one in, in announcing uh, shortly. If you understand what's coming um, on top of this network, it would be impossible not to be super excited. It would be impossible. So what I what I realized is this: I knew the existing system was going to fail spectacularly, and and I could spend a lot of time going to politicians and telling them and and going to and wasting my time on something that they actually didn't have a way out of from the system. That there's nothing they can do, and so I, I could get mad. I could yell at people. I could I could, because because of how much pain that's going to cause society or i could do this i could just move my time more of my time to the system that was going to replace it and the system that was going to 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 move to truth hope and abundance and and help the builders build that system faster the on ramps for billions of people onto that onto that system so that you could work, you could avoid for the, for for most of humanity, the chaos that's going to come from the existing system, and so all I think about is how fast can we, ex, uh, how fast can we do this? How why I'm here today, right, to to talk to you, is so hopefully one, two, ten, twenty people on this call say, I need to investigate that more because there's. Um, I know that he's speaking the truth on the existing system. So I need to investigate this new system more, more to say, what could this look, look like? And as they start to investigate, I suspect they will buy Bitcoin. They will become, the, the, and, and maybe they become developers in the ecosystem. Maybe they start a business in the ecosystem and maybe they bring the ecosystem to tens of thousands of other people in Indonesia. Yeah, the other so. thing, the other thing too here is, um, is what the Western world doesn't know. We live in a, we live with, we have lived with pretty stable democracies, pretty stable um, currencies for a long time, and so, 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 and and what I know now too is a lot of that stability actually comes from instabilities elsewhere. So it is exactly the same. The, so the U.S. imposes that tax on Africa and, and South America, and it um, to be able to have that privilege. That's what it, that's what it looks like, unfortunately. And so, but people are blind to that inside that system because they're inside the system, and they they look at these other regions and they say, "Why don't you just work harder?" Without knowing the the what what is underlying the system to make it to make it corrupt and 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 so when you get when you get a system like that that's getting worse and worse and worse people are going to break down all over the world and so the faster yeah. that we build the new system the faster that all society benefits yeah completely agree with that to summarize uh, do you have uh, advice 
for Indonesia that's watching uh, this session. Um, learn why this protocol is important. Um, and then tell your friends why this uh, pro uh, uh, protocol is important. Buy, buy Bitcoin, put it in self-custody. Start there, start there or learn why and then start, start there. But as you, as you learn more, I think you're going to find yourself um, really excited about, about what's happening here. You're, you're at the first way, it's, it's a similar time to when the internet just stepped off um, in, in Bitcoin. And, and there's so much value creation um, in this network that is going to, uh, that's going to bring truth, hope and abundance to the world. Um, so if you're in the early, if you're in the early innings of that, you're going to have a different frame of the world than the one that you you might be stuck in now that looks at the existing world. So we're so early. We are so early. We are oh, so definitely. early. Um, <laughs> like ninety nine percent of the pe uh, ninety nine percent of the planet doesn't understand this um, right now. And I'm um, and and again, I I lots of my friends, lots of very smart business uh, pe people here. They, um, we are going to we are going to see the biggest wealth transfer the world has ever seen from rich nations to poor nations, because poor nations will probably go first. Okay, we still have a little uh, a little bit more time. Uh, is we there have anything else? Here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll read one from there. So. The question is, uh, people said that inflation helps us to produce a technology like now that will not be happening if we are still in gold standard. Will hard money stop innovation? And war is fueled by money printing uh, that have created a lot of tech. What do you think about that? So it's ludicrous. Um, it's the, so, so to, now I would say that if on the change, as everybody takes in, uh, then then yes, but but what uh, then then it'll slow down for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, but 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 what that says is the only reason I invest in tech is because I'm going to lose my money if I don't. Uh -huh. okay? That's that's really what what that that thought experiment says. The only reason I'm investing, the only reason mm -hmm. I'm buying anything is because my money is going to be worthless if I don't. That's what that, that's really saying, which isn't why why you buy uh, you buy or invest. I can tell you because I invest in a lot of companies. Um, and I invest because I think the thing that the entrepreneurs are building is going to make a positive change in the world and they have a chance to create something of lots of value. And I can make a bunch of money because they do. That's why I invest not because my money is going to lose value. And so that wouldn't change one iota in, an, in, in a new model. Now, when I say one iota in a, as you had a debt, if you had a debt collapse, in the debt collapse, it would change for a while because people ah. wouldn't have, uh, people wouldn't have a bunch of money to, uh, to invest because everything would collapse. So, yep. so, but in a new transition, whether it's Bitcoin or not, because if that was true, then I would have never started a venture capital fund investing in Bitcoin companies, right? Because because why would I? I would just hold Bitcoin and would wait wait while other will everything else happen, and why would I uh, start a venture capital company investing in Bitcoin companies? Because I think that they can grow faster. And the Bitcoin Bitcoin's going to grow. So I, I know Bitcoin's going to go way up in value or relative value, the real value of Bitcoin over time is going to go way up. And that means those companies need to exceed that rate of growth. Mm -hmm. And and that's why I'm investing them today. So so no, the the um that is not true. It just seems true from from a system that's had all of this money flush flushing around. In fact, today, in, in fact, today, it's probably the opposite. Um, if you're in, if, if let's take energy where you have long cap, long cycle capital costs, you, um, you can't make those, uh, those investments in energy because the, the system is so unstable 
um, you can't make a long term bet on anything right now because the system is so unstable. I see. Okay. Is it, last but not least, is, is there anything else we haven't asked you that you want to touch upon? I'm good. This has been great. Oh, this has been great. It's a pleasure to, to, to have you here. And I hope we can talk more in the future because I really enjoy your talks. No, oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, again, I, I, I uh, where, where are you? Where are you guys located? I'm in Medan, but sometimes in Jakarta. Bani is in Europe. Uh, you said you've you've been in to Indonesia yep. quite a few times. Where? Where in Indonesia? Go Jakarta, Jakarta, Bali, Lombok. Uh, I've yeah. been here quite a while. Then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Expecting for you to come by. Someday next time, maybe we'll have a uh, a face to face event. Sounds great. Sounds great. That would be nice. <laughs> okay. And if the audience want to know more about you, uh, uh, can you tell me where they should go or to follow you? Um, so uh, my my Twitter handle is at Jeff Booth, um, <clears throat> and uh, that's probably the best spot. Um, I, I just saw one quick question uh, that will the Fed and those controlling money give up uh, the fiat standard, what they consent to keep their status? Um, I think that's an important question. Okay. Um, the, the, uh, the thing about Bitcoin is it's decentralized and secure on the, uh, on, on the base layer. And, and that decentralization and security means the Fed cannot stop this. There's nothing they can do. I talked, I, I recently talked to the national security advisor to Biden, who was, who was a friend of mine. He's, he has much admitted that there's nothing that can, can there's nothing that can stop this network. Um, so if you cut off that network for your own citizens, essentially you lose the benefit of the network for your citizens. And, um, and so, and somebody else gains that the benefit of that network for their citizens. So, um, so if, and, and just in, for anyone else listening to that, if your fear of Bitcoin is you think somebody's going to stop it, then you're actually making the ma you're making it worse for you for yourself with that fear because you're giving that system you're giving some people power that they shouldn't have, and and uh, and and you're in reinforcing that. So if that's your fear. Um, then, then it, that should not be your fear, especially, or, or, or at least, I got, I got to be careful. Do your own research and understand what, why, um, why that that is not a high probability event that this could be stopped. Yeah, completely agree with that, and it's it goes to game theory, right? Uh, that's an, a very interesting topic that I wish we could discuss more about about it, but time is running short, too bad. Yeah. Um, I'll get, so we'll do uh, one one thing, have people look up shelling point. And what we what we have in game theory on this shelling point is you have a shelling point in the world that the only reason we cooperate right now is because uh, of, of fear or 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 or, or war. Right. Hmm. Um, and, um, I'm going to trust, I'm going to trust you because, because you have weapons of, uh, that, that can make my life really bad. So that's a shelling point that we have today. Um, and Bitcoin moves the shelling point. It's a, it's, it's a crazy thing in game theory, but, but it moves the shelling point to global cooperation. We, um, we, uh, there's global cooperation on top of Bitcoin because we don't need um, the 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 weapons to be able to, to trust each other. It's based on global cooperation because we can't <clears throat> change the money. Uh, yeah. Human human nature can't go in and change it. Nobody can. So that's a major shift. Major shift. Shift yeah. shifts and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and you might want to, I don't know if you, um, just before we go, 
Um, I wrote an article recently that people might want to look up. It's called Finding Signal Finding in a Noisy the World. Signal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, and I just think, uh, I think just it's an important one for people that don't know why um, Bitcoin is decentralized and secure and there's nothing else that is like this. Um, that it, why it's such a novel, um, why it's a once in a lifetime type of innovation discovery um, that uh, that it, it can't be replicated. But it's but it's where it goes in a real deep dive there. So I think that's a good one for people to take a look at. Okay, yeah, for sure we will uh, relay your article to to the community. And, once again, yeah. thank you for coming to our event. Uh, talk to you soon. Sounds great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah.